far back corner. Why is this station so big? That must be it. Boom! We've got power! The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. This can't be happening. A, a call. Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. Wait, then... Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you... Wait, that the, the he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course! That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. Campbell? George's old girl. Oh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Marie Campbell? So, not Don, huh? No, not Don. What are you going to... Uh, uh. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. Twenty years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. 
murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. Now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. Interview you? Uh, all right, I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Teddy. Be honest with me, or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. Ah! Ow. What the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just the night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God was there. Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. Wait. Ricky was there? Roller Ricky? He was. And he was in on the whole thing. Is that true, Teddy? Did you tell him? What? No! He... <laughs> you two were as close as anybody. I don't believe for a second you didn't tell him. He and George would both be alive still. Hmm. Well, if Ricky weren't dead, we could have heard his side of the story. It was just a stupid prank. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... Oh, God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. If I'd saved Jason, maybe I could have derailed her for a bit. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. Telling me just a joke. I can stall for time here. How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. I felt small and confused. And... Who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody laughing away but then he stops and he's looking up 
at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Said it. What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy? George fell off Whistling Point. Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, God damn it! I just chased him up there, and... He kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Ugh. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all, you did. If she's lying, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us are bragged for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw... I'm... I'm sorry. If Dr. Sullivan had survived, then maybe... There's no excuse for what she did, Forrest. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no! That coward killed the story. <sighs> we'll take care of Maurice Russell later. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. It never should have started. He shouldn't have pushed my door to He should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met, before he joined your football team, was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. We're at Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So... Marie? Peggy! Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk.
talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god, I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Casey, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out that my sister is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh... Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. I... Wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Yeah. Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night, too. But they got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left... Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I can prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Marie, Peggy never forgot about you! Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept it here, on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say, then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I... Well, I... Henderson Police! Freeze! No! Henry! Get out of there! Ah! Peggy! We have two wounded, and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Henderson Police! Freeze! Forrest! Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie! Hey, Zara! I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. <sighs> Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This has been Forrest Nash. Let's make tomorrow better.
a killer frequency.